Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello to you and welcome back to the channel where today you join me to take a look at the brand new Mercedes-AMG GTR Pro. The GTR Pro takes the GTR and makes it even more hardcore, even faster at the Nürburgring, and just look at this thing. So it goes without saying, after the last year enjoying and driving my AMG GTR to the max, I've popped down my name and put in an order for a GTR Pro, so more on that later on. Today, let's get started, talk about the new car, run over some of the details, the improvements, the things that have changed, and then I'll head down to the garage, jump into my GTR, and show you in more detail the differences between the two. Let's get started then, the new GTR Pro. Let's get started with an overview of the new limited edition flagship member of the AMG GT family, which is also, of course, a future Schmiemobile. So the GTR Pro has been presented at the 2018 Los Angeles Auto Show, coming two and a half years or so after the introduction of the GTR itself, which is also still available on sale, with the GTR Pro coming in above that, and as you can clearly tell looking at it, it dials things on a notch. It dials up the aggression, it dials up the looks, and it also dials up the dynamic capabilities. Now the GTR Pro has been launched at the same time as a midlife cycle update to the entire GT lineup, so a facelift, if you will, including new headlights, new tail lights, and substantial changes to the interior. We'll talk more about it later but in there you'll find a new digital dashboard you have the AMG performance steering wheel with the touch response buttons and you also have the new center console fitted now with the touchscreen buttons too but more on that to come clearly just looking though at the GTR Pro you can take in what this car is about the GTR launched with some inspiration and learnings from motorsport based on the AMG GT3 car but the ongoing success of that car in racing and also the GT4 class cars have led to even more integration of motorsport technology now found in the GTR Pro Many of you will know how much I've used my GTR over the last 12 months. I've done about 18,000 miles with the car in a year. That's about 28, 29,000 kilometers. And in that time, I've done laps of the Nordschleife. I've taken it for VMAX runs on the Autobahn. I've taken it to Ikea to go shopping, but I've used it for just about everything that you could do daily driving a car of this ilk. So the GTR develops on that. Perhaps it will actually be slightly less practical due to the additional racing characteristics, the roll cage, the you have in the rear for example but basically it's that formula the mid front engine layout rear wheel drive double clutch automatic gearbox and a car that's loaded with technology reliability and usability but also a complete driving experience when you get the opportunity to do so so for the GTR Pro the suspension has been reworked the aero has been reworked and you just look around the car for example starting at the very front of it where you can see that new front splitter it's held in place by two support struts just beneath the number plate. It comes around towards the sides where you have the flicks, the canards located there. All of these components are carbon fiber, including, for example, the louvres that you find above the front wheel wells, which are, of course, for reducing the swelling air and keeping downforce at the front axle. The car also has new lightweight components, so carbon fiber, for example, here, but also carbon fiber components used inside the axles and different components. Continuing down the side, you have new side skirts, and you get towards the rear where either side of the rear bumper you have those aero pieces at the sides akin to the AMG 1 of course the hypercar hybrid project from Mercedes AMG 2 and also with the rear wing new struts all of these components inspired to look like motorsport in fact inspired and developed through the Mercedes AMG motorsport programs then we come to the interior there is now something for the driver that I've been waiting for in the AMG GT. So just like its big brother, the GT four-door, the two-door cars now get the fully upgraded interior, including the full 12.3 inch digital screen for the dashboard. In the car, it has the Super Sport display screen with additional AMG info, and it's supported by the larger central floating tablet, which is now the 10.25 inch screen for the command infotainment. That also has additional software, including, for example, AMG track pace, which allows you to store your lap time, see your delta, and also register your 0 to 100 time should you wish. It also has the AMG Performance Steering Wheel that has the touch controls that allow you to easily toggle what you're looking at on either of 
the displays, and beneath those you have the hotkeys on the left side for your two favourite functions. For example, that could be the exhaust open and closed, the different traction control modes, and the car still has the nine stage traction control toggle in the centre as well. And then on the right side, the hotkey allows you to quickly change between your different driving modes. So for example, slippery, comfort, sport, sport plus, or race if you're heading out to the racetrack. In the centre console itself, they've also included the new display buttons. It still maintains the V8 dis design layout, the four buttons on either side in the form of the V8 engine, but you can see there they're now illuminated, you can see exactly what you're pressing. It's just a general upgrade to the interior overall. Back to the exterior, as I mentioned, you have new headlights, new tail lights as well, part of the general upgrades to the facelift models. It also has the option now for a front camera with parking assist to help you park. There's a redesigned general generally to the entirety of the exterior, but also under the skin, things have changed as well. So the suspension has been updated, inspired by Motorsport. It now has a mechanically adjustable spring set and dampers. It also has the front axle uh, with the carbon fibre torsion bar, still using a steel bar at the rear, all generally saving weight, enhancing the experience. So I really look forward to seeing what this is going to be like to actually drive, but lightweight savings everywhere, the lighter wheels. We also have the lightweight uh, seats on the interior, as well as some trim changes, um, the half roll cage. Uh, you come with sta as standard with the four point harnesses, the half cage and also with a two kilo fire extinguisher as well. Very much akin to the track versions you might have seen from other manufacturers. For example, with a Porsche you can option the Visac package. I would say this is more dramatic than a GT3 RS that would have or wouldn't have the Visac package. It's much more into this, although it's based around the same engine. So the power plant in the GTR Pro maintains the 4-litre bi-turbo V8 made by AMG in a Falterback. It has 585 PS and 700 Newton meters of torque, which means 0 to 100 kilometers an hour or 62 miles per hour in 3.6 seconds and onto a top speed of 318 kilometers an hour, which is 198 miles per hour. Down in the garage with my car then, which I'm sure many of you will know has been to Rentec to have their stage two package with the new downpipes and new twin turbos. So the power output of that car is over 760 horsepower. But I tell you what, after seeing the press pics of the GTR Pro, it somehow almost makes this look a little bit dated without all of the additional carbon fiber aero on the bodywork. But I've got a secret to tell you, which I'm sure some of the regular subscribers will be expecting. So I popped my name down for what at the time I was calling the GTR in quotation marks club sport before I even took delivery of the GTR. Back in September, September 2017, about two months before this car actually arrived, I knew or guessed that there would be a more hardcore version to come down the line. So hopefully that's going to transition to an order and we'll know more about that in the future. But for now, let's take a quick walk around just to highlight some of the differences between the cars. Now for this one, I expect to have the lightweight wheels. Those come as standard on the GTR Pro. Normally they would have the silver rim around the exterior that I painted in satin black all over. The GTR Pro would come with the carbon ceramic brakes. On the GTR GTR, yellow brakes mean normal steel ones and they're gold if you have carbon ceramics. For the GTR Pro, they have a special black finish as opposed to being gold, so they'll be black. You'll also have noticed the livery pack on the launch car, which is painted in Selenite Magno, which is satin grey. In that combination exclusively, you can have it with the bright green wrapped accents. If you have any other body colour, so for example the Solar Beam Yellow or Black or Green Hell Magno, then the livery pack, if you choose to opt it, is in black as opposed to green. Otherwise, you can do without shoes you prefer. But coming around to the front to talk about some of the differences. So of course the headlights have been refreshed. I always thought these ones look good but they've been updated. Down below the splitter. Big difference. So one of the things about this car is how usable it is. The front overhang isn't really that long but the newer car has an extended splitter with the struts to support it just in here as well as being slightly more aggressive around the side with the flicks which might impact usability slightly. One thing I noticed they had done, we installed a mesh here to protect the intercoolers behind but there is one built into the new car to help with that. I think there's also some more cooling work underneath the car for the cooling of the brakes. It will have newer uh, carbon inserts on the side skirt. Then coming around towards the back, of course, you have those extended flicks uh, or carbon pieces uh, at the side. And also one other thing about the wing, just to see here, you can see the bracket mount is quite different. Uh, the new car has a motorsport style bracket and it also has a gurney flap installed at the very back, which does introduce a bit of drag at high speed, but it gives you more downforce and keeps the rear end planted. But technologies like for example the rear wheel steering are maintained, the gearbox is carried across, 
we come in just to take a look at the interior of my car one of the biggest things as I mentioned is the new dashboard so where we have the uh, traditional style rev counter and speedo in this car that's all now changed with one significantly larger display the steering wheel uh, does away with these uh, more analog buttons which are changed just to turn on the lights so you can see that better which are now changed to the touch response style with the toggles that you would have just in here uh, on each side to help out with that and then the general central console all gets updated too the start button is moving to be up here with the touch screen buttons all around a more updated uh, in input controller in the center but still with this the nine stage traction control so let's just fire mine into life and take it out I suppose the sad but inevitable thing is that this car is now going to need to find its way to a new home. Now don't get me wrong, I love the car, the memories with it, the collection day with Nico Rosberg, the driving that I've done with it since, but ultimately if I'm going to have the newer, slightly improved, even more driving enthusiast focused version, it doesn't make sense to keep them both alongside each other. So I have no plans to sell it in the immediate future. If there's a buyer out there, do get in touch if you're interested in purchasing this car. I'm of course willing to do a pretty good deal on it. I've had a lot of enjoyment out of it, but long term it doesn't make sense to keep both cars side by side. In any case though, what I do love about it is that even though it's quite a large car, it's an immensely powerful car, you can still drive it like this in comfort mode, just cruising through the center of the city. It's not uncomfortable. It's not difficult. It's not stressful. Admittedly, you have a very long bonnet, but you've also got a pretty decent amount of luggage space and you can quite easily toggle the different driving modes, pop it up into individual where it all of course gets a lot louder, drop some gears manually, you start to get a feel for that, we're not going to do too much of that, makes a lot of sound, pop it back into comfort for the moment, but everything is just so easy and works and it's reliable, I had one issue but that was fixed straight away with the intercooler at the front, um, not too much of a hassle on that front and in fact with the uh, protection in front of it, it completely saves that from happening again, but like this, it's just an easy car to drive, it's just a brilliant car to drive, it's the one car that you can do everything with, and then this car can do in excess of 200 miles per hour, I've had it to 208 miles per hour, that's 335 kilometers per hour is the quickest I've been in it, on the GPS readout, it's an incredibly fast car, and also for driving around the Nordschleife, for driving just daily, it ticks every box, I know I'm raving about it a lot, but hey, I should be, I'm buying another AMG GT, um, I, I wish I had almost got onto the GTS wan uh, bandwagon earlier on. And when you update the technology, it's all going to get even better. So the GTR Pro is an absolute must for me. I gather there might even be a Black Series to come in the future as well, but no doubt in even more limited numbers uh, than the GTR Pro. So I have no clue if I'll be able to uh, secure an allocation for myself for one. Uh, down the line of course I'd love to add that to my permanent car collection this was never intended to be a permanent car um, I think the GTR Pro is my guess would be it's at least six months before one could be delivered um, if not a little bit more so it's not right around the corner but of course some very exciting things are around the corner anyway just enjoying the car taking it out for a drive because I haven't driven it for the last week is reminding me how much I'm enjoying owning it uh, in every way so let's head back towards the garage and just go over a few more little things about the GTR Pro. Back in the garage but one thing I would have liked out of the Pro would have been a touch more power as it is it still has that 585 horsepower the exact same engine output as the existing GTR whereas maybe they could have taken it up to 612 to be in line with the S63 and the E63S although as I understand it those come about through some pretty major mechanical changes for which there might not be the packaging room available inside the GT. In any case, it has some very nice touches. For example, the bootlid badge at the back, instead of the GTR being on a yellow background, now has that checkered flag background with the bright green R. Again, bringing through those green touches, also with the accent pack, that remind us it was developed at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, which has the nickname the Green Hell. In fact, the GTR Pro, with Maro Engel at the wheel, has got around the Green Hell in a time of 7 minutes, 4 seconds, 0.632, which for an engine up front is remarkably quick. A very impressive time, about 7 or 8 seconds quicker than the GTR itself managed before now. Now in terms of the lightweight elements, I don't necessarily know that the car itself is actually lighter. If you think about it, by adding on additional aerodynamic parts, the extended splitter, the flicks at the side, the louvres, you're actually adding components and therefore weight even though they're carbon fibre, but it does come equipped with the lightweight seats, the lightweight wheels and the lightweight carbon ceramic brakes, all the standard to keep that as reduced as possible. 
The wheels themselves, as well as the silver rim, are actually painted in a special titanium grey that is only available on the GTR Pro itself. And also inside, there's one touch I really like on the door cards, the inside trim with the AMG style logo that's finished there too. But overall, I think the GTR Pro is the upgrade that I certainly wanted out of the GTR. I'm sure the price point is going to be significantly elevated. It hasn't been announced yet, but I'm certainly expecting it to be well, more than £25,000 or so more than the standard car. So a big step up, leading towards the future of a Black Series. So the SLS Black Series, when it came out, was around £100,000 more than the SLS. So quite a big difference when you think of it overall. But there we go, a first look at a future car that's going to be arriving in the garage in the Schmi 150 fleet in future. Of course, this car will be heading to a new home at some point. I don't know if that's now, in six months, in nine months, or when exactly. But do get in touch if you're interested yourself. But for now, though, I'll wrap that up. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the first look at the GTR Pro, and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers!